Hi, it's Dr. Lori. Are you ready for some more real bargains? People have sent me their photographs of objects that they bought at a flea market or a thrift store or a yard sale or maybe in a storage locker auction and I've identified it and appraised it for them. They've been good enough to give me permission to retell their stories and I'm going to share these bargains with you. There's great objects, interesting stories, and you're not going to believe what's out there. So now this is a real bargain. If you're looking for real bargains, this is it. I get an online appraisal form that comes in from my website and I'm reading it and I'm looking at the pictures that are attached to it and a gentleman has sent me this form and on the form it says, you know, this is the piece I want you to evaluate. And then I look at the form and I look at the pictures and I see a picture of an etching and I see a picture of a watermark, which is the mark, of course, within the paper, right, of this particular etching, this work on paper. And he says, it's a Rembrandt. I think it's a Rembrandt. And I got it at a thrift store for $10. And he says, it fell out of a box at the thrift store of other art. And when I picked it up off the floor, the person who was basically checking me out at the thrift store said, oh, that must be a fake. I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. Do you know where I'm going with this? Guess where I'm going with this? So... I researched this watermark and I researched this Rembrandt. It's a very rare Rembrandt etching and it's the real thing for $10 at a thrift store. Interestingly enough, what it has is that watermark, which is called the Amsterdam Coat of Arms watermark. It's very famous, it's very rare, and the image is also quite rare. It's not the typical ones of Rembrandt, of course, with the crucifixion or something. It is, in fact, called A Student Reading by Candlelight by Rembrandt. And this etching on paper dates to about the 1640s, 1650s, found in a thrift store. Do you know how much this one was worth? You want to see a real bargain? This piece was a real bargain. Another one had sold recently for $8,500. That one that, that this person actually found was worth $15,000. That's how rare it was. That's how important it was. And that's how much it was a real bargain. Everybody likes mid-century modern, and this is a real bargain about mid-century modern furniture. So you probably have heard of Lucite. Lucite, the acrylic resin invented by DuPont in the late 1930s, 1937. And it, it was used to bond glass. That was the idea of Lucite. But then it became uh, functional for functional furniture, for chairs, for lamps. Or, oh, I could tell you about Lucite lamps till like next year. But Lucite furniture. So this real bargain uh, comes from someone who was thrift store shopping for tables. And actually, he's a guy I met on a video call, and he said, you know, I know a lot about drums. And I go out and I look for drums, because he likes drums. And he said, you know, but these tables were coming off the truck into the thrift store. And I thought, gee, those are pretty good. He goes, and then I thought, I don't really know how um, I should evaluate them. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I guess I look for scratches. Is that right, Dr. Lori? And I said, yeah, on Lucite, this particular type of red acrylic resin, you want to make sure that there are no scratches or chips, indentations and such. Lucite is very popular with interior designers because it, it disappears in a room. It just goes away. You know, it's like a table, but it's clear. So it kind of disappears visually within a room. So he finds these pieces, they're coming off a truck, there's four tables, three of them match, they have the glass tops, the glass tops are very important to this because they're expensive. He has the glass tops and the bases are lucite, and they're geometric lucite, right? So they're pieces of lucite that are put together in those geometric forms of the 1950s, 1960s, really modern, really great condition. So. He, he inquires how much is it going to be, and it's going to be $750 for four tables, one foyer table and a coffee table and two side tables. And he says, wow, 750 bucks. So he gets them as low as they will go, which is $750 for all of them. And he asked me, what can you tell me? I said, well, you know, you want to look for the, the names, like the big names of Lucite designers, like Verano and Bigelow and, you know, Vetri and those guys. So you want to look for those particular Lucite designers. If you can evaluate them to those names, that's going to be real value. Well, the real bargain was right here at the thrift store that day for $750. Bucks, I know, sounds like a big investment. His Lucite tables, four of them with the glass tops, were worth $4,000 or $1,000 per.
her table, with the exception of the foyer table, which was worth a little bit more. So real bargain, that was a real bargain and a real good example of how furniture can be the thing you should be looking for at the thrift store. So this next story comes from a video call appraisal that I had with a person who was thrift store shopping, wanted, me to, wanted to show me some of her thrift store finds. So the thrift store finds that she found here were roosters. Now, I'm not big on roosters. I like to sleep in. That's me. But she had these particular roosters and she thought they were Murano and they were relatively inexpensive at the thrift store. So she made an investment. She bought these, in fact, for $40 for both of them. So, okay, she had a small one and a big one, but the small one had a chip. So the one that had a chip, actually, she said, well, maybe I paid too much at $40 for both of them. The big one was really quite nice. As I said, they're from, Mar they're from Murano, Venice, right, Italy. And the last time I was in Venice, Italy, I was taking a gondola ride, and the gondolier was talking Italian to the guy who was helping us all into the boats, and the guys were basically saying, where are we going to put her? She's so fat. Where are we going to put her? And they didn't realize that I spoke Italian, so <laughs> anyway, they felt kind of bad when I interjected, like, put me anywhere, don't worry, I won't sink the thing, but that's what happened the last time I was in Venice, but I digress. So anyway, the Murano Glass Factory is there, it's been there since the 1200s AD, and these particular pieces, the person I was talking to on the video chat wasn't sure if they were Murano or not, but they looked like Murano from the base. So if you look at the base of these glass figures, you can actually tell the curves whether or not it's a Murano piece, just like in these particular roosters. The one rooster that was small was chipped, and it was worth $30, even though she paid $40 for both of them. And the big one was the real bargain. It's worth $150, and it's from the 1960s. So this next real bargain comes from a video call appraisal. So a woman calls me up and we're having this chat on video and she says, you know, Dr. Lori, I want you to look at this because I collect cases, travel cases, sometimes called train cases. And she lives in a big American city and she said, you know, I go to thrift stores and I go to the thrift stores in the places where wealthy people live near, right? So the thrift store where she goes is the one where all we assume the wealthy people are bringing their things that they want to donate to the thrift store or give away. Okay. So basically she says, I got this piece. I was really excited for my collection. You know, you ever go to a thrift store and you're going to pay $1 for something and you're thinking, I don't care. It's $1. I got to get a bargain out of a dollar, right? So she paid $1 for this. This is a leather, a leather strap and alligator leather train case or makeup case or carrying case for your accessories, your accoutrements, you know, your lipstick and such. So this piece has Amelia Earhart's name inside of it. Why? Because the very famous aviator actually had, it was thought that she had actually traveled with alligator luggage. So a lot of people, particular companies, would actually market alligator luggage in the 1930s and 1940s to people because of Amelia Earhart. So she picks this piece up, she opens it up, she, it has the key with it, which was amazing, has the original key with it in the thrift store. She picks it up for a dollar, she looks at it, she says, I'm buying this. It says Amelia Earhart on the mirror, as those from the 1930s and 40s did. And she gets this piece, and I'm able to tell her that it's a real bargain, and it's a real bargain at $250. And she added it to her collection, too. I have collections of pieces. I like my collections. You know, I collect fish, uh, figurines, and I collect birdhouses and other things. And, you know, people collect stuff that they like. So I was really happy that she found something at a thrift store that was such a great real bargain, and that was part of her collection, too. This real bargain comes from Ohio, an estate sale in Ohio. And the person who is allowing me to retell this story actually bought a piece of pre-Columbian pottery. Now, you know pre-Columbian, right? It's from the time period prior to 1492, or pre-Columbus, right? Before Columbus comes to the New World, 1492 or earlier. So this is a piece of pre-Columbian pottery. So the buyer of this particular piece actually got in touch with me and sent me a picture through our online appraisals. And he sent me this photograph and he said, Dr. Lori, I got this piece for 20 bucks at an auction, basically an online, an auction estate sale. So he gets this piece from the estate auction and he sends me this photograph and I look at this photograph and I go, what is broken? 
right? And he said, well, I knew it was broken, but I thought for 20 bucks I'd take a risk on it, right? So he said, well, I'll take a risk. Most of the time I would tell you, you know what, it's broken, it's not in good shape, condition is of course important to value, and it is very important to value. But in fact, in this particular case, he got a real bargain. For 20 bucks, what he actually purchased was a broken, but repairable, could be repaired, pre-Columbian Narino type bowl. The reason why this bowl is important are those animal figures around the rim of the bowl. So that was the thing that made me go, wow, this is a great, great find. He bought it for $20 and it's worth $150. That's broken. If it were actually in good shape and he found this for $20 at that estate auction, he actually would have had a piece worth $500. Now, he might have to put some money in the restoration or the, rest, the professional repair of the piece, but it's gonna be worth it. Right now, broken, it's worth 150. Wonderful piece and a real bargain. So, you know I've traveled many, many places and this next real bargain is about a place that I was lucky to travel to, um, St. Petersburg, Russia. And the first time I was in St. Petersburg, I was able to go to the Hermitage Museum. And you know, I'm a museum girl and I got a little choked up being in the Hermitage, like, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm here. And anyway, so I'm there with some of the great masterpieces, Michelangelo's and Rembrandt's and Tintoretto and Titian and all the great masterpieces are there. Um, from the collection, of course, of Catherine the Great. She was a great collector. She really was a woman who knew how to run her life. And interestingly enough, this particular museum is full with these, full of these great masterpieces. And you walk through the galleries and there's a window open and there's a leaky air conditioner in the window. It's like, what are they doing here? But amongst all these great pieces, well, we could do a little bit more better with temperature and humidity control there. There is a collection of wonderful lacquer boxes and they are to depict Russian folk tales. Depicting Russian folk tales on lacquer boxes, whether they're black lacquer or red lacquer, is a long, long, long and popular folk art in Russia. They're really desirable and lots of tourists will go and actually purchase them and will pay a lot of money for them, a couple hundred dollars to thousands of dollars for a lacquer box. So I found this particular real bargain, which was sent to me by a priority member who said, I go to all these flea markets, I love flea markets, and I picked this up for a couple of bucks. I've had it for 30 years, picked it up a long time ago. I don't know anything about it. I said, wow, it's a red lacquer box. It's wonderful. I'm going back and forth with this person on email. So anyway, she says, well, I didn't know anything much about it. I didn't even know that there were red lacquer boxes. Well, red lacquer boxes are very desirable for many. And you'll notice that there is a folk tale immortalized in the image painted onto the lacquer box. The inside of the lacquer box is all red, which helps to identify it to a particular region and particular artists of this region in Russia. So this real bargain is a real winner. This real bargain for the $3 that she bought at the yard sale, that she paid at the yard sale for this Russian lacquer box, it's an original from the 1970s and value on it is 250 bucks. So I've got my cheat sheet because I want to read you something about this next real bargain. It comes from one of my priority members and he writes, I'd like information on this hand stitched red and white quilt piece. I think it's a wall hanging. It's 76 by 70. It has some light stains. I don't know anything about it. There's no tears. It's kind of nice. And it seems like the stitches are consistent. So, okay. And he says, I'm going to sell it on eBay, Dr. Lori, but I don't know anything about it. So I get back to him and I tell him that he has an applique quilt, an applique quilt, which in fact means that they apply, right? They apply the decoration on it. And it's a red white applique quilt, 70 by 76 inches. Okay. So I get back to him and I tell him your quilt is worth $550, right? Relatively desirable. Lots of people are looking for it. So he gets back to me and he types it in and he goes, where am I going to sell this for $550? Who's going to buy this? This guy tells me. And I said, who's going to buy this? I said, you could sell it on eBay. You could sell it on Etsy. You could sell it on Ruby Lane. You could sell it. On, I mean, I've got a list of these places. Sell it. Go ahead. Sell it online. So he comes back and he goes, I can't believe this, Dr. Lori. I sold my quilt for the $550 that you said it was worth. He said to some lady who's thrilled because she's been looking for this quilt, because she's been looking for an applique style quilt like this one. 
And I said, well, I said, now do you believe it? He said, I believe it. He said, I'm with you, Dr. Lori. I believe it. It's a real bargain. He got it for a very little amount, and he, in fact, was able to resell it. He, people can find these things. You can find these things, and you can resell them. It's the real sales that I want you to talk about. Not the people who are saying, oh, well, you know, you could get this or you can't get that. The real sales are really what you want to do. If you want to hear something real, what's accurate, right here. So this real bargain is from one of my priority members. And the priority service is where people can send in unlimited images of their objects um, by subscription. So what's interesting about this one is this priority member sent me this picture and it was a picture of a painting in a frame and there was a signature on it, but he couldn't really read the signature. It was kind of illegible. So, you know, that's really common that the signature of an artist is really quick and you can't really read it. And it's kind of a pain, but you try to figure it out. Okay. So I'm looking at this piece and I'm looking at all the different aspects of it. Like I tell you, you know, look at the back, look at the stretcher, look at the canvas, look at the color, look at the signature, look at everything. And I'm looking at it and uh, my priority member says to me, hey, Dr. Lori, you know, I picked this up at an estate sale for 20 bucks. And I'm like, wow, it's a kind of a good painting. And it was a painting of the Mediterranean, the Amalfi Coast in Italy. And you've heard about the Amalfi Coast. Oh, Amalfi, you know, beautiful Amalfi, Sorrento and Positano and Capri and, you know, so. It's, that's a cool place for me because I, of course, am of Italian descent and my family is from the Amalfi area. So it's kind of interesting. It was a beautiful painting and it looked very Mediterranean, very Italian, wonderful landscape painting. And you can see all the elements that make you say, oh, I want to go to Italy, not only for the wine, you know. <laughs> so anyway, this particular painting, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and I'm saying, you know, this looks familiar to me. It's got to be somebody. And I figure out the, of course, signature and I match up what I think the signature is with the subject matter, with the picture, like what the artist painted. And I look at all the other elements and you know, this is where all the experience comes in, right? All those years of stalking my thesis advisors to read dissertations, anyway. So basically what this piece is, is a relatively well-known work of art by a Danish artist in the early part of the 1900s named Carl all guard, A-A-L-G-A-A-R-D. Lots of A's, you know, the, the Danish, they got lots of vowels right next to each other. Anyway, so it's that particular painting. Interestingly enough, this painting was worth a lot of money, $2,500. That real bargain was had for 20 bucks at an estate sale. Well, those are some great objects and some great stories. We really found some real bargains. So tune in next time so you don't miss another Dr. Lori Real Bargains video. And I wish you good luck on the hunt.